Hello everyone, Gilly here. I'm working on examples today for my t upcoming talk, Refactoring Refactored with Ramda. Uh, the first talk was on kind of simple loops and how you might refactor those. The second talk is gonna be on what I'm calling decision functions in Ramda. There are three that I'm aware of. I'm pretty sure there are more. There's an if else function, which just takes some condition. If it's true, applies a function. If it's false, applies a different function. There's the when function, which conditionally applies a function. And then last but not least, there's the cond function, which is short for, I believe, conditional or conditions, one of those words. Uh, cond actually comes from Lisp, and it's gonna be the star of this video. Um, so let's get into this example. Um, I have to find a function called error to status code, which accepts some kind of an error, which is very, very loosely defined, very, very uh, not, let's say, not strongly typed. How's that? Um, and it's gonna decide on that error, depending on the shape of it, depending on what it is, what status code to return. So you might see this on a server in the wild somewhere. I hope you don't, it's not the greatest. It's the kind of code that if you see this somewhere, you might wanna start rethinking some of the libraries you're using or exactly how you're letting errors bubble up. But anyways, that being said, what this function does is it checks to see, first off, is this thing, does it have a constructor? Is it an object with some kind of a type? If it is, then if the type specifically is an error with a status, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just return that error status. This is something weird. Imagine maybe you're using some library and it has like a suggested status that it returns with its errors. That's kind of what this is representing. So it's kind of a weird case, but we could see it in the wild for sure. Um, the second type is a validation error, so maybe this means you gave me some data and that data is bad because of X, Y, and Z. Uh, if we get that, we're going to return a 400 back, which is a bad request in HTTP status code ling lingo. Um, this next one is kind of just a duck typed error, if you will. It's not really uh, joined to the error prototype, or it's not constructible, or it's just got this weird property where in order to figure out what kind of error it is, you have to look at the type key. Um, again, this is kind of just a mishmash example, but it's interesting in its mishmashed nature. Um, if that happens, we're gonna return a 402, which is a payment required status code. I just found that on the internet. I don't know if that's appropriate. I just uh, thought it was interesting. Okay, here's another thing to show kind of how these types are not that strong. Um, if we get some kind of a string, so this is saying this function can accept some kind of an arbitrary string, and that string contains, or it matches the text not found, then we're gonna return a 404. This uh, little i character right here means that this regex is case insensitive. For those of you who are not uh, regex experts or uh, intermediates or novices or wherever, wherever the i flag falls. And otherwise, if we get anything else, we're just going to return a 500, which of course is classic uh, server, you know, server exception. I don't know what happened. I can't handle this. Something bad, something went really, really wrong here. Okay, so in order to start refactoring, I'm going to run my tests to make sure that I'm not pulling anything sneaky and this code works. Um, as I said in the last video, I, pr I pr produced um, tests are extremely important to refactoring to make sure you're not making a misstep or introducing errors into your code. In refactoring, the goal is not to add new behavior or take behavior away, it's to keep the behavior the same. So with that being said, let's get into the actual refactoring here. The first thing I'm gonna do is just looking at these ifs, I'm gonna start to kind of flatten out this uh, nested conditional structure. So I'm just gonna and these together. Um, if that's true, I'm gonna return the error status and then else if, uh, what's our other condition here? Other condition looks kind of like this, but it's not exactly the same. Um, this is a validation error now. I'm gonna return a 400, and then I can delete this garbage code. Um, I'm gonna make this an else if as well, just to kind of make these things uniform. Let me make sure I haven't broken anything. One of the keys to refactoring in my experience has been to try trying to make things as similar as possible so that they can be patternized and just plucked out somehow. And I think there's not really, um, th that's how it goes with Ramda too. If you're trying to refactor and use a more functional style, you wanna try to make things look uniform. So at this point, um, I flattened it. I'm gonna bring in Ramda now. 
Now let me go to the top. And I'm going to try to sort of make these actual conditions look a little more similar. So Ramda has a really nice method or function called is, um, which just checks the type of something. So here what I'm saying now is if the error is an error with a status, then we're just going to pluck it out. Um, so I'll use r.is for both of these cases. Change to paren, insert a paren. So let's make sure that I haven't broken anything. Wonderful, it looks like I haven't. Um, this next case is a little more interesting. I'm gonna use r.propEQ, which says, is the type property of the object equal to payment included? And if you want, you can give it the argument right here. Although, spoiler, we're gonna pull it out eventually. Um, that's why I'm restructuring this. That's, that's sort of the method behind the madness. Um, this next case, we're gonna need to be able, we're gonna need to test Oh wait, you know what? I should really run this and make sure it still works. Whew, okay, it doesn't. That's why we have these tests, thank goodness. Um, you'll notice the function's undefined and null, return 500. So if I've written tests for these, let's assume they're valid inputs, so I have to handle them. Um, the problem is probably that Ramda is not being too smart about prop equal, and it really shouldn't be. Um, and it's just saying, let's try to call dot type on whatever you give me. And in this case, dot type is undefined or null. So I'm just gonna cheat a little bit and use um, a function up here just to make sure we're safe once we get there. So I'm gonna check and say, if the Boolean value of the error is false, that's what this not means, Let's just return a 500. So we've got like 500s on the top and 500s on the bottom. So let's make sure I fixed it actually. Okay, this might not be the best, but it works for now and it'll come through probably pretty nicely later. So now we've got to do a regex test. R has a nice method called test. Um, and I could just continue using the built-in dot test method, but I'm not going to, because like I said earlier, I was trying to say, is that we want to try to make these look as similar as possible. So let's run that. Okay, so far so good. Our tests still pass. Um, I'm even going to, just to make these look similar, I'm even going to do something a little weird here. I'm going to do an r dot always true, and I'm going to give that error. Um, and you know, maybe I can do it like that. R dot always builds a new function with just its first argument that knows how to always return that value. That's all it does. So in this case, it should always return true. And then I'm fulfilling the argument with error and this condition should end up always returning true. And again, I'm just doing this to make all of these conditions similar and hopefully you can see the similarity. Um, if not, I'll point it out so that worked. The actual similarity here is that we have a bunch of functions which all accept error as their final argument. Um, I don't know if you remember me saying this in the last video or not, but something really, really sweet about uh, Ramda and currying is if you have a value at the end, you can pluck it out. So that'll come back into play soon. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to now go the whole way and convert this to a cond expression. So doing that, I can, um, cond, not const. Doing that, I can make this just a constant value. I don't have to make it an explicit function anymore. Ramda will use con to build that function for me. And now what con takes is it takes an array of arrays. And these inner arrays aren't really arrays. They're more just pairs, where the first thing that goes into it is what you would call a predicate function. And the second thing that goes into it is a transformation function. And what the predicate function does, for those of you who aren't aware, um, it takes in some kind of a value and it just answers true or false. So is blue would be a predicate function that returns true or false. Um, this transformation function takes in the same value and it transforms it somehow. Um, so unfortunately, there's no easy way for me to piecemeal, that I'm aware of at least, this refactoring. Well, I guess I can. You know what, actually I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try that by calling this orridge. 
And I'm gonna start by just doing this. So r.always true error status code or rich. So here I'm saying, you know, given some value, always return true. That's what that predicate function does. This is a predicate function. And the actual, ooh, actually I'm wrong here. I'm wrong. Um, let me step back. Um, I am, okay, here's what I wanna do. I am gonna start by making this a function. I wanna be able to call out to the original one so I can show this as being an actual refactoring um, rather than me just big bang solving the problem. So what I'm gonna do is inside I'm gonna return r.cond and then I'm just gonna invoke it with error. And then I'm just gonna call out to the original thing. So error to status original. So this is just very, very dumb. It's saying always, just always call the original with whatever value you are given. Let me make sure I didn't break anything. So it's also worth noting the test is calling this now, right? A ridge is new, I just defined it. The test doesn't know about it. Okay, so we're still good. Um, and now I'm gonna start piecemeal pulling this over. Um, I'll just go from top to bottom. I think that's probably the easiest. So the first condition, and again, or I actually didn't say this earlier, I should have said this. Cond works from the top to the bottom. So it tries the first predicate. If it's true, it applies the transformation and it's done. Um, and it just works one after another after another. So I'm gonna use a special function called is nil here um, to cover the first case. Nil isn't really a concept that exists in JavaScript. It does exist in Ramda, however, and it basically just means null or undefined. So that should save us from a lot of those annoying error cases later. So we have that and theoretically, I should be able to delete this from here, make that just an if and run this and we'll still pass. Excellent. So now I'm gonna piecemeal start to kind of just bring these over. Um, and if you remember the last episode, uh, currying is really sweet because I can just do something like this. I can say if it's an error with a status, then we wanna do something. Um, and this is why it's important that the second value into con is a transformation function because we have to transform these errors with a status into just their status. And to do that, we'll use r.prop. All r.prop knows how to do is build a new function which takes in a value and just does dot whatever of that value. So in this case, r.prop builds a new function which all it knows how to do is say dot status at whatever value you pass to it. So let me make sure I'm still working. Um, let's run this. Okay, we're still good, still in service. Um, if we get a validation error, this is gonna be similar, but this is another always case. And we're gonna return a 400 always. Oop, not 4,000. <laughs> so we're still good. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, this is more of the same, really. We're just gonna say prop EQ type payment payment okay if that's the case we're just going to turn a 402 how are we doing still doing good okay and then we're just going to pluck up these last few remaining ones so test tilt blah not found this is really cool. Hopefully this is showing you a little bit of the power of kind of currying. Like I had these functions which originally took the value, now they don't and it doesn't actually matter at all. So now for the final significant move, we're just gonna do, we're gonna delete the call to the old function, do an always true. And always true, this predicate right here, will always yield a 500. So if nothing else is matched, we're just gonna 500 on that. Um, so let's run this and make sure I have, well, I'm a little bit of a clean freak with code sometimes, I have to get rid of that comma first. Let's make sure we haven't broken anything, and we haven't, awesome. So now this is kinda neat, the parallelism here. Um, you can see we accept an error here, and we call error here. So, as I said in the last video, we can just delete that off. We can get rid of our return. 
put this on this line and then indent these a little bit. And now we should have the same result. All right, well, that's all for Condop, the Condop operator. Hopefully this was somewhat useful to you. Thanks for watching.